I haven't seen you in forever, Figs. Been such a long time. How are you, honey? How are you, darling? Mwah, mwah. mwah. Double kisses. Mwah. mwah. Sound like my mother. Wow. Look at us meeting up other than for the wet spot. <laughs> I know. What are we ta- what do we talk about? Just normal things? Yeah, we have things. Um <laughs> First of all, okay. yeah, hair looks good. You're it looks like you're getting haircuts somewhere in quarantine. I'm doing it myself. You're doing it yourself. That's amazing. Yeah. See, like, okay, do you have any tips? Because Frank's hair is getting really long. He's uh-huh. very afraid to let me cut it, but he's starting to look. <laughs> you know what? Do you have um? Do you have one of those trimmers that have the guides on it? We don't have a trimmer with a guide, do we? We have razors. We have sharp kitchen knives. We have scissors. <laughs> I'll just use one of those kitchen scissors that you use to cut pizza with. Right here, girl. Just, <laughs> just that pizza wheel. Just use that. Yeah, Maybe use a pizza, a pizza wheel. Yeah. Aw, yeah, it looks, makes a difference. It looks good because a lot, like I would say most dudes are not getting haircuts right now. Yeah, I've been cutting my neighbor's hair. Like everyone that lives in my house, I, I've been cutting everyone's hair. You've been cutting your neighbor's hair. So it's like you're going around like you're the kid trying to make a buck shoveling snow. You're like, yeah, yeah. you're not it's able to adorable. do this. I set it up. I make it look like a barber shop. I serve little ice cold beers. Really? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I mean, they were like, if they're, they're my in-laws, so, you know. Yeah, oh, okay. And, yeah, so you're uh, spending a lot of time with your girlfriend's family. That's nice. Yeah, you're helping. You showed me that you're like painting a wall the other day. So yesterday I was at my mom's house. I took a break from the Dominican chaos. And, Dominican uh, chaos? Dominican chaos, yeah. It's a lot of words, a lot of yelling, a lot of potions and shit being made. In general I, I, or because they're like nervous about the virus? No, in, in general. It's always loud. Always. Where I live is loud. There was a fire a block away yesterday. People really? came outside. Yeah, yeah. They were like started recording on their phones. Yeah, I live basically in, in world star hip hop. That's where I live. <laughs> That's great. Uh, but no, yeah, no. Yesterday I heard how my mama did some did some yard work, and um, uh, but most of the time, yeah, we're, I've been here with her in laws. They're awesome. They cook every day. They eat very early, so I have to be in their house at four p.m. to have dinner. But for me, they don't know that it's actually my breakfast. It's like your first meal. It's my first meal, and then I order Uber Eats for the rest of the day. And I gained about <laughs> 30 pounds, Chrissy. Chrissy, I, I'm dead ass. I weighed myself. I'm, two fifth, I'm 260. So you, did you see so that means you gained weight? I gained a lot of weight. I gained oh, a lot. Wow. I was, the last time, I was probably 240. I, I gained about 20 pounds. So you gained 20 pounds? Yeah. You don't look it. But it's maybe because it's because I'm me. looking at you from the neck up. It's the angle. Trust me. So, it will also, a lot of people, my girl is like, I don't even notice, you know, but I don't know. I, Maybe you gained it in your dick. It's in my dick. It's in my, it's in my thighs. None of my skinny jeans fit me. I've oh, become, I'm, dude, I'm okay. sweat, yeah, I'm a sweatpants dad now. <laughs> Literally, only thing that fits me is my sweatpants. Oh, no. It's yeah. like, you sound, it's like that scene from Mean Girls. Sweatpants are all that fit me right now. Yeah. But Should you, you always snap back. You're like a, you're a guy. Guys can just stop eating bread for a week and they lose 20 pounds. Yeah, but it's really hard not to eat bread, man. It's my, it's my, it's my bread and butter. Bread's uh, my bread and butter. Bread is like your bread and butter. Yeah. I'm starting to feel yeah, bad about myself. More just like because exercise puts me into a good frame for the, of mine for the rest of the day, especially if I do it in the morning. Then it's like I have the will for the rest of the day to get shit done. And I, I just, I feel like the blood is flowing. It's like into getting into my brain. And it's like, I swear it helps creativity and productivity. And it's, it's also, so now I'm just trying to like run every other day. Cause I'm like, how is, you know, how was your walk starting out? Yeah. How was your walk today? It was good. We, we do this usual walk where we like, I mean, how long does it take over an hour, Frank? almost two hours, we like walk, we like journey to this Dunkin' Donuts and it's been the only Dunkin' Donuts for a long time. It was the only thing that was open. So we go there, we hit the Dunkin'. This time we bought 12, well, Frank ordered 12 donuts. So I'm just holding it back for an hour, the rest of the walk, like like a fucking pizza box. And then he was holding it for a while, just under his arm, like a textbook. I was like, no, you can't hold the donuts like that. They're gonna, it's gonna, 
you know, mess up the integrity of the donuts. They're going to get, and now they all look like, well, yeah. I get a bite out of it. Yeah, it looks like shit. Throw that donut out. Yeah. Hold me in there. I'm like, oh, speaking of uh, exercising, I just had six donuts. <laughs> no, but it's Have good. You... Like, um, yeah, I mean, I always, I'm a person who gets on the scale every week and I, do like, I, I know that I have a range. I know that when I start getting, once I hit, I think 142, then I go, all right, girl, you got to reel it in a little bit. That's the, that's the outer limit. Um, I bought a scale from Amazon. What? I just, bought one. I just bought a scale from Amazon and I go on it every single day. Ooh. Yeah. Is and it then, like, mine is like the clear kind. Yes. It's a clear, it's a clear one and it's blue, lights up blue. Ooh, no, mine I've actually had for, since I lived in Queens, so okay. at least four years I've had it. So there's some semen on that scale. There's, there's semen on that scale, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's been candy in that scale. Um, yeah, that's good though. Um, <laughs> have you, have you, I know like, I have to ask you for, um, for advice. I know you've been hiking before, right? Yeah, we got into hiking and it's like, for, for a while I just thought hiking was walking for lesbians, but hiking <laughs> is just really, any, anytime you go off the regular terrain, like, so it turns out we have a shit ton of parks in Westchester, like so yeah. many, and um, there's hills, and I think I'm going to order, have to order a pair of hiking shoes, because I've just been using my sneakers, which are old anyway, and it's uh -huh. good, it's like easy to go, I mean, you're out walking for at least two hours it seems no matter which of these parks you go to and it like it keeps your mind dis you know distracted and off the fact that you're walking and it's nice you get your sun you see nature i swear like being in nature like calms you down or calms me down maybe because i like always have anxiety about something but yeah wow. it's been really good and and like we went to cranberry park reserve uh -huh. eisenhower park um what's the other one Rockefeller, all the big names. Yeah, have you have you heard of? Because I know you're in Westchester. Have you heard of Croton Dam? Croton Dam? There's a Valhalla. There's a Valhalla and Dam. There's a Kensico Dam, which is in Valhalla. But Croton, I haven't been to Croton. Have we been to Croton? We gotta grow. It started really a, out of a function of going to a place where there was a lot of Pokemon, um, like a lot of Pokestops. <laughs> but then we're like, now we're just straight oh up God. into it. Oh my God, I'm playing Pokemon on the computer with the little one. I'm trying to teach him how to play the actual card game. Like, oh, the card game or throw the ball? No, the card game, not Aww. throw the ball. And, uh, and it's so much fun. Yeah, it's really cool. But it's, but it's, all, a, um, it's all based on, well, it's not based on in-game purchases, but they kind of, if you're a gambler, they kind of throw a little like, hey, if you... If you play for two more hours, you can buy a pack of new cards. Mm -hmm. And if, if you give us your PayPal account, you can get a whole set of cards for only five ninety nine. And I'm like, they Shit. they're very <laughs> sneaky. Pokemon Go is sneaky too. They're like, oh, there's all these new Pokemon, and some are shiny now. Oh, I guess you gotta buy a bigger backpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit in. Oh, your <laughs> ice bag is full. Guess what? You, you know. <laughs> Oh, you ran out of balls. We have a deal on balls. <laughs> You're going to need a new master ball. It's only $14.99. Yeah. And oh, look at all these fun th outfits for your for your avatar. Buy <laughs> I bought shoes for an avatar. <laughs> it's bad. That's bad. That's bad. It's really bad. Well, we, we've all um, done it, though. Yeah. I know. That's I was just I was trying yeah. to figure out how long I've known you for. And because I remember, well, I know I started, I think I, I mean, I first know of you when I was dating Pat, you were doing, did he sort of discover you or find you? I know that you were doing some of his bringers at, um, I was doing, I was, he, he discovered me at another bringer. So I started, I started stand up comedy at Caroline's doing Linda Smith's comedy class. And I, and I, and it was fun. And Vince August was like one of the teachers there. And you know how, I don't know if you know how it works, but it's like an improv class. You do a fucking class every week. And then at the end you do a big show. Yeah. And it's basically, yeah. it's a bringer show in disguise. 
you bring your family. Everyone has a good time. It's a lot of fun. It's a great thing for a, a comic who's starting off. You know what I mean? And um, I, I t- towards the end of the class, I got really good. Well, good in that in that frame in that aspect. And uh, she and was like, "Listen, you're, you're, so she would have me exactly." And literally, well, actually, that's hilarious. I wouldn't bring that much people, but I was, I don't know. I, I guess I was okay. I was feeling it. I never bombed. And I was feeling, I felt strong. Anyway, so I, um, I was doing her shows. So when we did the first one, which was a big graduation class, she'd be like, oh, man, you know, you were pretty good. Like, why don't we do it again? You know, blah, 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 which was all a cover because, like you said, I just brought a bunch of people. Um, so I was doing one of her shows. This was probably like the fourth one. So this is what I would do. My first year in comedy was like, I would prep for that one for that one show every two months, that one bringer show. And that that's I day. did that too. You do this, that's it's kind of like an easy thing to fall yeah. in because you're just working for the next big show. You're just trying to get yeah. that five, seven minutes good. It's not a yeah. it's not a bad way to start. I mean, I kind of did that too. And it's like, yeah, you're kind of a bringer at the beginning, but guess what? Like I think kind of so is everybody. Or you grind it out in open mics and and like kind of i don't know lose, yeah. lose it there's routes there's different routes to to get to where you you know to try to get there where you want to go whether it's so what like, what was that year the year that you did linda smith's class so it had a, it must have been 2011 or 2010 because i was i had to be 20 or, 20 or 21 years old i was it was around that year I damn I wish I could I got to show you the video one day like clips of it, how skinny I was I think it was uh Dan Soder who was the host wow and he was he was making fun of me I was wearing like a I was wearing like a spider-man like a graphic t-shirt but I had a vest over it and he, <laughs> he was like this kid just robbed somebody at a prom oh like wow some, That's he was funny. Funny. but um but anyway so about I'll say maybe like the fourth or fifth show um Pat Dixon was on that show <laughs> And he saw me do this character. I, I was like, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do like a character. I thought I was fucking John Leguizamo. I was up there with a fucking conga drum, and I was doing, <laughs> and I was, and I told the guy who was, uh, who's the kid that runs? He's into comic books and stuff. Goots, Ray Goots. Ray Remember Goots, him? yeah. So Ray Goots was like, big, like the manager for that night or whatever. And I was asking him to like, listen, man. Every time I bang the drums, I want you to put the lights down, and then put them back up. And I'm gonna be a different person. So I was basically like doing a character where I was like a Marisa, like I was fucking like what's okay. going, like what's up, and then I was doing like a black dude. It was just, it was just bad. It was not what you do it. It wasn't well thought out of. It wasn't, it wasn't pristine. It wasn't, it wasn't the golden seven minutes I should have displayed. You know what I mean? Because it was a packed house. I was on a roll. I don't know why I decided to. Just you were just like this is probably because people laughed at it, and you were like, I guess I should lean into this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I people were no, no one laughed at it. I never did this before. No Nobody one laughed. laughed. I bombed. I, I mean, I, I got some laughs, but there were so many weird technical issues. I, it wasn't played out. I never did it before. It was a it was a first time thing. So, anyways, Pat Dixon saw me, and when I get, when I went into the dressing room, the green room, he was like, he was like, you know, hey kid, like, uh, like, hey man, I like your stuff. I like all those subway people you did. Cause you know, Pat was really into that kind of New York subway kind of right. like green shit. He was like, I like that. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, this is my podcast. He whipped out the fucking New York City crime report thing. And he was like, you know, if you ever want to come to, down to the creek in a cave and let's record something, you know, whatever, let's do it. So then we became friends and, and we started, and I, I would fuck around with his podcast when he had it in the creek in the cave, at the creek in the cave. And then he started doing shows at, I don't know if it was at the stand first or Caroline's, but I did a show with him and I did pretty well for that time. Whatever. So you would do like your New York y type character. I started in his shows, I started doing this uh Figgy the Kid. I was doing I would interrupt his shows and sell candy. And people thought it was real. And then oh, wow. I would go on stage and they'd realize that I was fucking around and they liked that shit. And I was like, oh man, this is fun. And uh and yeah, and then I started doing normal stand-up and I started bombing. <laughs> <laughs> as you do you know everybody bombs except for me and i did really well too then i then i then he, you know then we he i was doing good we were caroline's and all this shit or whatever and and we were doing shows together you me and, and Courtney mcginnis we had fun like i, I was a good time you know and then was, what happened <laughs> oh um in terms of what in terms of well you were having fun with him and then oh um i mean to be honest with you if if 
if he was still doing shows at these places, you know, I'm pretty sure I'd still be doing some of his shows or whatever. Um, I think that he eventually stopped, just like how all of us do with producing shows, it kind of eventually loses its its luster and he just kind of like, but it fades away. And, um, and I stopped doing shows under his uh, production, but- uh, His tutelage. But, he, but yeah, right? that's tutelage, a word. Under his tutelage. <laughs> and, uh, but he got in the compound and then he started bringing me to compound. And the compound started, you know, I started meeting people and having a good time before you know it. Gino and Aaron, I, I fucking immediately uh, hit it off with those guys. I, I love that. That's my type of thing. Just nothing makes sense. It's just all fucking. Sporadic. They're like your real daddies. Yeah. They're like my real dad. It's like, well, it's like Pat's my real dad who I, who I'm like, you know, who I'm like, I, I don't know how to make you proud. And they're like my drunk uncles who are like, God, ah, come on, kid. Let's do some coke, man. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah. And then I got a compound. So it all kind of works out. And then, you know, yeah. What first? So, what year was this that you first started going to Compound? Hmm. Damn. When did when did I do the crime report at Compound? I remember it was Steve was there. Shit, man. It must have been. Um, damn. I don't know, Chrissy. Maybe four years ago. How long is so? The West Spot's been on for like one year almost. Not When's even one a year, year yet. Not even a year yet. It'll be a year in July. Okay, it's getting there around the corner. So it's been a year for that. I would say maybe three years ago. For yeah. Place. But I, if I go back on Facebook or if I go back on Instagram, I can go back to that first thing where I'm in, you know, dressed up as a cop or I was doing El Chapo or whatever, you know. So, so. you were going in to Compound to do, to do Pat's New York City Crime Report. So how did you first get exposed to Gino and Aaron? Did you meet them as people or did you see In Hot Water? Gino and Aaron, how the hell did I get into? I always knew Aaron. I, I knew Aaron from seeing him at the stand and seeing him at shows and admiring him and being like, wow, this guy's awesome. And I never, I didn't really see Gino do stand up. When did I fucking meet them? I don't know if they were on the show one day. Um, and then, and then Gino was like, hey, man, it was Aaron. It, oh, fuck, man. I didn't know. I wish I, if you would have given me, if you would have prepped me, I would have done some research because I, I don't even remember. When was the first time I met Gino and Aaron? I know that I did Gino's, I did Gino's birthday show. Uh, did I meet them doing stand up? So oh, okay, 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 okay. This is how I met them. Okay, cool. So Pat Dixon was doing a show at West Side Comedy Club and he had me come up as, he was like, you know, he would do any character. Pat, you know, that's what I love about Pat. Pat was like, you know, he's like, I don't care what you do. Like, come on, do something. Like, you know, just just go out there and put it into work. You know, he, he had that respect for the craft where, you know, you're going to go out there, it's going to be trial and error. So he told me, he, I was like, hey, man, let me do Sebastian. I was like, you know, this is kind of stupid. And he was like, yeah, fuck it, yeah, do that. So I go to do the Do your show. Sebastian impression? Yeah, which is Which just, is amazing. Uh, it's, but, uh, it's just this. Uh, <laughs> okay. it's, literally, it's just, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, it's, you know, the funniest thing, if I'm a uh, segue real quick, I, um, all my YouTube videos have like 120 views, but I have one labeled Sebastian Maniscalco live at Westside Comedy Club. And it's got like a thousand views. And wow. all, the com all the comments are angry moms who are like, this is disgusting. This isn't Sebastian. Because <laughs> this I'm on is stage. not him. Oh, really? I followed ISIS faggot. So I go on stage and I'm like, get this faggot out of here. Like, I'm just... <laughs> Bad. it's horrible so they probably watch it with their kids oh look he's in new york and then you got me on stage calling somebody bin laden a fag it's really really bad anyways so when you so, were doing pat shows at west side were you still expected to bring people no no okay he stopped, he stopped that he stopped that stuff he stopped that at the stand when he was doing it was like a um that was like when you and i it was you me uh, LeBranch and McGinnis, yeah. and he was kind of giving us an opportunity. You know, he never told me though. He never went up to me and said, "This is a bringer show." He never, he never right. told me that. He was just, he was saying, "Listen, you, you should bring some, bring some people. This is a show. You're in, you know, whatever." He never gave me pressure to bring. People. But he did say, Where, "Bring some people, though." He would just say it, but it, and he said it in a way like, you know, let's, you know, we want to sell out tickets. Right. We want, the show, want the show to be good. Like, get some people. But it was he never gave me like, you gotta have five people, Figs. You know what yeah, I mean? He, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was never like, I never felt like it was. It's also like, this is going to be a good show. This is at a hot club. Yeah. Like this would be yeah. a good show. To tell. It makes sense. It's pressure. like, it works, yeah, it works both ways. 
Yeah, at Caroline's, it was like, you got to have this much. At Caroline's, it was like, you got to have, uh, you got to bring seven to 10 people. If you bring 15 to 30, you get five more minutes and you get like, you know, um, your DVD is free. You, know, some sort. Yeah. you got to fucking, yeah, a, a tote. You know what I'm saying? Some, some shit like that. A Caroline's mug. Yeah, you get a fucking Caroline's mug. I one day, one day I wore a Caroline's shirt when I was doing a, get a, a spot at the comic strip. How fucking dumb was that? Everyone was like, what are you doing? You're at the comedy oh. show. Why? I was like, but it's a, it's a comedy. Like, I'm representing sure. comedy. Yeah. They're like, no, we hate that club. I was like, oh, this is fucking gay. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so yeah, he stopped. The bringer stuff stopped when, I think, when he stopped doing it at the stand. You know what I'm saying? Because we were doing it at the stand. Uh, then he was doing something called, like, Desperation Tonight at <laughs> Caroline's. Mm-hmm. And I would just jump on that. Um, and that was fun. But um, West Side Comedy Club... I was doing Sebastian, and I had Berg and Gino laughing. They were like, kind of laughing, or whatever. And then Berg did one of those things where he was like, "Yeah, we gotta get you. You gotta come on in hot water. Like, we gotta get you on it." And I went on in hot water, and he was like, um, "I think the first time was he was like, can you portray Gino?" Or he wanted me to, or I was like, "Let me do Cosby." It was one of those things, and it worked out well. And then you know, I was in, I was fucking nervous as fuck, you know. Um, were you and doing like the mouth moving thing or were you doing like just you and as a character? If it, was, if it was Gino, if I was doing Gino, I was Gino. I had on his, on his suit and I was reading the teleprompter, something that he wrote. So he had me reading, which is not one of my strong suits. I'm oh. reading and, and I'm doing, but I, I did well. It was good because I, because I, I was just acting like him. And Do you uh, have a Gino voice? It was just like, it was like, hey, it was like, you know, <laughs> Like, and I just, and I, and I, I was, I was doing his, uh, like his antics. Like it wasn't perfect, Man- but it was. Mannerisms and like his yelling. His mannerisms and all that stuff. So, yelling. Yes. And the whole Plus drink. Alcohol. You know, the, whole, the whole fucking, the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that shit. So I was doing stuff like that, whatever. And, and, and it was good. It was funny because he had this giant rant. And I nailed it, and it was, you know, it was fun. That was back. You really do like, have a talent for observation. Like that's what I. That's what makes you like really good at doing characters. Like you, yeah. It's like maybe you can't like read perfectly, but <laughs> you can watch someone, and you're you're good at copying. And like you have such specific strengths. Like you can do really great voices. And like, yeah, it's like when once you find like what you're really good at, like doing a Sebastian or doing like fucking I don't know Cosby or something. Then it's like, oh wow! It's, it must be the best feeling to be like, wow, this hits just about every time I do it. Yeah, for sure. It, it's it's fun, you know. Um, that ha- that actually brought me, leads me to a question, which is kind of a little random, but um, you know how when Trump came out, everyone was like, oh, it's hacky to do Trump, because like you were saying, voices. I was doing Trump right away, you know, and then you had other guys doing Trump, whatever. And then before you know it, you're like, wow, this is cool. People are laughing. It's a good impression. And then they're like, everyone's doing it. This is a hack. Do you think people are going to say that quarantine jokes are hack? Are going to be hack? Yeah. That's really interesting. I I don't know because I, you know, I kind of see what other comics are doing. Some are like, I'm writing so many jokes every day and I'm, I'm not. I don't feel motivated to write jokes. I mean, we're doing these. We're doing wet spot. We're doing lives and Zooms and stuff. And I find that better and just as good as working the funny muscles. Like, yeah, you're not doing your crowd work, but you can improvise. You can make fun of somebody in a Zoom. I just, I don't feel motivated to write jokes about quarantine because I don't, I haven't found what's funny about it yet. Like, and I think if I, if I do, they're, they're going to be on other topics anyway. Like, well, me and my boyfriend during quarantine. Okay. Well now that's a boyfriend joke or, oh, I'm getting yeah. fat during quarantine. That's a fat joke. Yes. So I think that, I think, yeah, I think people will be sick of hearing quarantine jokes or hearing people mention it. It's like, I think when the clubs open again, I think I personally will be like, yes this is great to be out we're doing it but then i'm just gonna like i think people want to get back to where they were before yeah. it was happening and then comedy could maybe get them in that place yeah yeah well um, said but on the other hand you don't want to like not call a spade a spade and not yeah you know acknowledge the truth that everyone's been living in i don't know i think i guess for me personally it's more fun to be like have you seen this conspiracy theory video but i would never say that on stage yeah. <laughs> have you have you done any um any zoom comedy shows besides I haven't. i've turned some down and i feel Same. bad because i have this like 
you got to say yes to everything. This is lean times. You got to <laughs> accept That's it all. That's always in my head. That's always yeah. in my head. You have to say yes to everything. You, yes. I've said no to so many things. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I, it's, it's, I need to fight my instincts, yeah. trust my instincts, or if it's fear. If it you know? were paid and I needed the money, I yeah, would oh, do it. I would do it yeah. because it's like, yeah, this, the show is probably not going to be great. You're probably not going to feel great doing it. But sometimes in a live stand-up show, that's the case. And you just do it for money because you need the money. Um, but yeah, like a free Zoom streaming comedy show. Like I don't, I don't see the point because it's not like I have a bunch of new quarantine jokes that I got to try out. And I'd so much rather like if I have a riff or a funny idea, I think it comes out way more organically in this format than like yeah. trying to do jokes for no audience. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's like, you're just that feeling when no one's laughing or you feel like no one heard and it's a good joke. It's like, why would you run towards that feeling? Like, why would you be like, I'm going to willingly embrace this bad feeling of yeah. no audience. Yeah. But they're doing it right. People are, they selling are doing tickets. it. Yeah. Some spots I'm doing. Um, I mean, I don't know what it is. I saw, I saw a preview of it and it looked like 20 people in a zoom conference, uh, for the comic strip on Wednesday. I'm doing uh but it's just for my friend. Gladys audience. Simon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but no, I don't even, I think it's all comics and they're waiting their turn. You know, Gladys Simon. Yeah. So I'm doing, she, she's a, a good friend of mine. Gladys is one of, she's we're gonna great. Go back, she's great. She's fa absolutely fantastic. She's batshit crazy. She's but been a mentor for so many people. She's just like a she's legend. She's so great. I love, she's just a sweet, she's just a sweet woman who just like, a sweet like fucking, you know, old comic who just yeah. keeps it real she with loves you. loves comedy. Yeah, she loves comedy. She's so fucking, she's so, uh, so fucking witty and, and funny and cute. Um, and she, um, she asked me to join a thing on Wednesday for her, uh, like to be her special guest. But she does these mics on Wednesdays or Fridays, but they're great mics. Like, they, there's always a real audience in there. Wow. There's tons of comics. Like, really? I need, I, yeah, every time I tell, every time I go a week without going there, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? So, this is a Zoom mic. Oh, no, 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 no. This is, no, this is, this is, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of like when it was back to normal. Regular times. Regular time, that's what it was. But now she's doing, she's using like Zoom. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a mic or if it's just a giant conversation with 20 people in it. Mm. You know, like I saw the preview of it. And in my head, I'm like, if they're going to put me up and be like, all right, everybody be quiet. Figs is talking. And they think I'm going to be like, so my girlfriend is Dominican. You know, like I'm not, like I don't know what, I'm not, I'm going to just talk like this. I'm just going to be like, here you I am. try it and then, okay, now oh, I'm going now. to. This doesn't work. Because it's her. Because it's her, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, let's, like, let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's have fun. But other people have asked me to do it, and I'm just like, I don't know if I want to, you know, be in a Zoom thing, and then you have other comics watching you, and, you know, I don't know. I've, I'm, I don't know. I've always been kind of insecure. I don't care. I can do comedy in front of any audience. I don't give a fuck. I get more nervous knowing that there's a comic watching or someone, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, let's say I got to do a set at the stand, and, and you know, Big J Okerson and fucking Shane Gillis is, is they're there, and they're going to they're gonna see me. I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want to bomb in front of those guys. Yeah. You know, but that's not where your head should be. Your head should be, i got to kick ass in front of this audience. And I've gotten better. At, I've gotten much better at, at that. I think it's going to be really hard to get real audiences for Zoom. Like, if you're a regular person, why do you go com to a comedy club? It's to get out of your fucking house. Yeah. And if you're in your house, you're, I feel like a Zoom comedy show is the last thing you're going to go and watch. You're going you're gonna to go through the whole of Netflix before you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, let me go on to Zoom and see what these comics are up to unless you're in that small percentage of people that's like oh i'm really into i gotta see these comics but like i think most people are like if they like stand-up they're looking at netflix specials right now they're going through shows mm -hmm. it's like the average person is like no not interested in that as an audience perspective either no maybe like seven or eight of those super fans you know those those ellis yeah. and phillies those fucking teddies those people the will you teddies. know tune in and support you for a while you know, big shout outs to Tom and Kelly, but, uh, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and, and after a while too, they're going to be like, this fucking sucks. You know, this is weird. Um, but I think podcasts are thriving. I think this is great that we can still do this, you know, and have fucking three porn stars on the other line and we're, we're fucking bouncing back. Like, like I've had, so I've had far so away. Fun. You yeah. can't touch them. Yeah. Yeah. I've had so much fun doing the West five like this, like, you know what I mean? Going back and forth, playing a video, 
Um, I really enjoyed last week's too. Like I, I think I don't, it feels really fun. It is fun. It is fun. Um, so you've been doing in hot water at this point for three years or so, four years. I don't know. Maybe perhaps, you know, but I mean, doing it, it's more like they, it's kind of, they treat me the way they treat you. It's just like, come on by and do something stupid. You know, it's it kind lands, of like fast and easy. It's casual. Yeah, if it lands, it lands. If it doesn't, but they've been asking me to to whenever Gino or Berg, whenever they're on the road and they got a uh, a gig or whatever, they'll ask me to fill in. I think that's been going on for like a year and a half now. Okay. Yeah, where they'll be like, "Hey, man, Berg's not going to be here. Can you come on by and fuck around in the booth?" You know, Gino's not going to be here, which is so fun. You would think that it's harder to be Berg. It's harder to be Gino. Because Gino is the fucking angry. He is, he is the pilot of that ship. Wow. You know, when there's dead air, when Bert is... He can f- stuff, Gino can fill it. He can always it's talk. It's, but he, ha- he has to deal with Berg's mind. Like, I get sensitive when Berg is like, this bitch sucks. But if you watch old episodes, or even, you know, if you were watching a recent episode, uh, Gino has to deal with that, where Berg is like, this is not going well. And Gino's like, I think this is going great. It was Aww. a stupid show, you know? Like, and yeah, Gino we're, having, we're hanging fun. out. We're hanging out. Uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to be Gino because you got to sit there and fucking, and then, you know, rock around with Berg while Berg is doing, you know, fucking backflips and shit. But, but yeah, I say like a year and a half, about a year. So and you half. feel that, does that make you feel appreciated when they ask you to fill in like that? Oh, I, of course. I love, I love it, man. I love, I love, um, I love doing stuff like that. I love it when they ask me to do shows and I've met so many other people doing it and I've befriended so many guys, you know, and I do question, I sometimes I question, the like I question not my not the morals but I I'm like okay I'm hanging out with Kevin Brandon and I'm opening up for him and he's fucking great and then I look on Twitter and I see all the people that talk shit about him and this and that you know and then I and then I'm working with wait Gino talk shit about I'm, who Kevin Brandon you know oh I'm, yeah you know, there seems to know. be a weird kind of battle going on and I've noticed even a battle recently between Chad Zumach and Brian McCarthy like they yeah really seem but, to dislike each other yeah i don't know who they, either of them are and i, oh, and I know oh. brian brian know mccarthy brian, used to be um kevin brennan's sidekick on uh, burning bridges on okay. compound okay but what i what i'm trying to say because you know me i can't fucking articulate anything there's like this aura around gino and berg and kevin that's keeping them from i feel like breaking through really you know what I'm saying? it's like this like what do you this, think it is do you think it's people thinking that they're like too conservative or too yes Republican. yes well, yes well, too conservative Which i don't think they are i think if anything aaron and gino are libertarian yes i uh, stray away from the political stuff i mean more like raunchy or like the shit that their state okay. said or yeah or the or the uh, uh the racist remarks you know whatever the the rape stuff, the, you have to keep going, the Asian shit, Gino with the Jews and the things that he's written and then Twitter saying faggot, all that stuff. It's like, it's like people don't look, but, but uh, you know, they don't look away from that. Like that's the first, that's the front cover when, it, when, when their names come up. And I, and I think, to, and mm-hmm. I say to myself, I love opening with them and I love doing everything and, and I don't ever want to stop. And I go, am I making the right decision? And I'm like, yeah, this is comedy. But I'm like, is this going to fucking scar me for the rest of my career? Like, let's say, I get a voice audition. This is just me speaking off the record, even though this yeah. is being recorded and it's going to be on. I'll edit it out. This is just me, like literally me. No, it's fine. It's like me and you right here. And I and I ask myself, I'm like, is is this going to hurt me in the future? Where like fucking, oh man, we need a, a guy to to fucking do a Scottish accent for a fucking Gimli in the Lord of the Rings and bullshit. And then they're going to be like, hey, was this you saying nigger faggot? On <laughs> what, what was this you said on fucking you know you your friends with Gina? And I'm like. Yeah, I love those guys. I don't care. But in the back of my head, I'm like, is this going to fucking, like, what do you think? Why do they have that aura around them? And why, like, why, you know? How because they're that? not, they're not, um, what, like, the industry would call woke, right? They're not, uh-huh. um, like, poster boys for Comedy Central. They're not, like, United Color to, Colors of Benetton. Like, oh, we yeah. represent one of every race. Let's all yeah. join hands and have a perfect lineup. They're... They're very, they have a very authentic voice. They're true to themselves. And like, 
which it's definitely a risk. It's like a real risk to find your real comedy voice and put it out there, especially when it's not like in fashion or like, cause the popular thing to do, who knows how things will change after everyone's like back after the virus, but like definitely before the trendy thing was to shit on white guys, shit on Trump. Um, yeah. Just like call, call people Nazis, call people white yeah. supremacists. Like, um, just sort of be like a cucky beta guy to me that yeah, yeah, yeah. felt like a kind of a comedy trend and for women it seemed like the trendy thing to do was like hate men um be real fat or just like in your vagina yeah yeah i don't know a total lack of i don't know femininity i guess and i was like well that's not me because i like to be a pretty feminine chick and i wear heels on stage and yeah. um i like men so that sucks. It feels like what's in fashion doesn't really fit me. And and I've thought about it too, because I've thought about, well, is my being on compound media keeping me from certain things? And, and maybe it is. And, and I'm like, well, what's the alternative? Is that you move away from anybody who's like a little bit edgy and, yeah. and okay, let's, let me spend a year pandering to the trendy group. Let me spend a year molding myself into think what would make me get me booked on comedy central or make me more like marketable to what's trendy right now if you do that let's say you do that successfully then what now you're like living a lie for the rest of your comedy life and yeah. how that could have feel to you like if you have to change yourself to get booked on certain things but but all the while you feel god it's like this isn't really who i really am and then let's say you're at a show and something slips out how you really feel well then all hell will break loose or uh, i just don't think that that's sustainable because i've thought about it too like well what if i change who i am to get booked on certain things and i got so much shit for impersonating kate willett i got so much shit for doing those characters but then guess what like a couple weeks later i went up at sticker treat and did michelle wolf and i was like you know what this is what the fuck i do now i do parodies i do characters and um, yeah. It feels better to not back down from who you really are. Cause yeah. I think it does embolden others to be who they are. And uh, it sucks. I really don't think we should all be the same in terms of comedy. And it's very tempting to change yourself when you see certain types of comics getting, getting certain gigs and getting booked and all oh, these, this type of comic is getting late night and I really want late night. Let me mold myself to that. But also, late night is not what it used to be. It's just like it's Hell no. a moment. Hell no. Would would either of us be thrilled to get it? Of course, but it doesn't propel you into permanent success the way it did, even yeah. back when Letterman was still doing it. Now it's like a lot of people don't respect the comedy on these late night shows. Like yeah. the general public don't respect the comedy on, I think, Colbert, Fallon. I think, I don't know. It sounds shitty, but like... I think the average person is not watching those shows. And if they are, nope. like, they're not comedy fans. It's all internet shit. They're all putting everything yeah. on YouTube and it's all, let's, you know, oh, we got to put this bit on YouTube. And, you know, I respect Conan. I still think it like, I mean, that would be a dream to get on Conan. And I loved Fallon for a long time, but I think he, I don't know, he became like this bubblegum sellout where he's, everything is awkward. I get so, I don't, you know, I feel this. Like, yeah, I remember everything. I used to go do karaoke on 23rd Street near um what was the original shake shack there was a karaoke spot there that i would go with my ex this was back in like 08 washington square park uh it was near mass oops it was near mass and square park it was near like live bait that area okay. on 23rd street like on okay. your way to go to new york comedy club and i would go in there with my with my ex and we would sing like karaoke he was obsessed with like like more obsessed with karaoke than anybody should be who's not Asian? you know it was, he was too into it but we would see jimmy fallon there all the time and really? at the bar drinking he would he would do karaoke and he was fun and then like yeah you see when uh, on a uh, snl and he was fun and then i think that's what happened he got the late night gig and think about it if you got it or if i got it there would be pressure to sort of like of course milk out course. you know to like to like of oh course. you gotta round off all your edges because you're trying to appeal to the most people and i think by doing that you turn off a lot of people because you're like there's no way that this is this real person you know yeah. i think people like in comedy now like real people real characters 
Um, I think the more you can lean into your own weirdness, the, the better, the more you can exaggerate, the more like everything that happens in my life is, is, is a story, is material, like playing up the funny moments in your life is mm -hmm. better than I think just trying to appease everybody and sound woke and sound smart and sound like mm -hmm. well-mannered. Because you never know, you never know what's going to happen. And that's, and I've had this conversation with Gino uh, and Berg and I, and I've told him, I'm like, Hey, do you guys ever like regret what you've done? Like, do you ever feel like you've gone too far or, or, you know, why don't you try to be more universal? Like you guys have so much talent. Like why, what, what's wrong with just tuning it a bit to become more universal? You know what I'm saying? And appeal, appeal, appeal to every audience. You know, when you're when you're on compound media, be raunchy and crazy, but be able to fucking bring it to Comedy Central and be a little bit more. Ah, uh, fuck. Let me talk about my niece and my nephew. You know, which they could, which they totally could. Either of totally guys could. could go. They could go the rest of their comedy careers probably without saying certain trigger words, and they would still be just as funny. I just wonder if if like doing this kind of comedy or being associated with compound media puts like a taint on you in a way it's like it's like are though is the is the comedy industry like so with horse blinders that's they're not even going to consider somebody out of the very small circle of what they deem um i don't know marketable that's exact that's the, that's a question that goes inside my head but gino uh i i displayed this emotion in him and he said to me he goes well let me tell you something. he goes he goes, no, I don't regret anything, and I, and I wouldn't change anything. He goes, I never thought I'd be here right now. I didn't know that there would be a compound media, and I'd be doing this show, and I love doing it. He goes, the universe just works it out. You know what I'm saying? He goes, he goes this, I'm grateful for this. You know, he goes, so you don't know what's going to happen. He goes, you don't know where you're going to be in five years or ten years or whatever. He goes, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you love, and, and you know, and, and like follow your heart, as gay as that sounds, but you know what I'm saying? Like my heart is doing stand up and people uh, making people laugh who want to come see me, you know, and, and people who want to tune in in hot water in the wet spot like that. That's who's there. That's your audience right now. So, you know, just give them give them uh, what they deserve, you know. True. And it's like, I haven't had this, this, a number of fans from any other thing I've done. Like I've bounced around different comedy groups. Like when I first started, I was definitely part of like the woke Brooklyn chick, feminist, like that was, that I was into that. Like I, I, um, cause that you just start and you don't know where your friends are going to be. You want everyone to like you. Yes. And the exactly. longer you do it, the more you kind of like sink into your tribe, which is great. And then I started with compound and I'm like, wow, I have real fans for the first time in my life. And they come to shows and they follow and they, they buy and they, and they and they yeah. ask for and they ask for used panties, but that's fine. and they ask <laughs> pro, they pros ask and me send them panties. <laughs> yeah, so supportive. So and I've it's like where else? Pictures. So it's like so I'm gonna pull out of all this this huge support group, this huge platform that I've been I'm so grateful to have. And like, if you look at the majority of comics, like, do they have a platform like what we have with Compound? It's like really enviable, and it's sad that so many comics wouldn't even consider pitching a show, despite yeah. the opportunity. Oh well, they've just painted Compound with a broad stroke. And yeah. that's unfortunate. And I guess it's good for us because we're not like our whole identity is not synced up with whatever people think of compound media. And I think yeah. the more and more people that are on board with compound and getting shows, doing pilots, the more it's, and the more people that are guests on compound, the more they're realizing like, Oh, these are the funniest people I've ever been around. Yeah. 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 And no matter what you've heard about like, Anthony or the, the the fans or whatever like once you get in the studio all that kind of melts away and you're like oh this is like the most fun I've ever yeah. had and this is like kind of something special you're around real New York comics you're yeah. around the real deal you know people that are fucking live in their car or you know people that have problems or, or you know you're homeless guys, guys who are homeless guys eating who are food off the floor Fucking, you got to understand that, that Anthony, you know, was back in the day when it was him and Opie, all the main comics, that was the mecca to get on that radio show and talk shit yeah. with them. And this is a, you know, this is a, a part, a piece of that is still, is still there, you know? And so. do you think if, the, you think if, if Kumia maybe was still on Sirius, you know, if, if it was basically like Kumi and Dave, like same show, but yeah. they were on Sirius, you wonder yeah. how 
how many people would like have different feelings on it, you know, like how many people would be like, Oh, well, compound's kind of niche. And Oh, I don't know. But I, I swear to God, like if, if, if Anthony and Dave were on Sirius XM, like how he was with Opie, I think most people would be sucking his dick trying to get on. Cause it's, everyone's like, everyone wants to get on Sirius. Of That's course. Of team. course. Yeah. 100, 100%. You know? Yeah. You know, definitely, man. I don't know. That's it's crazy. But Anthony seems to be happy. He's doing his own thing. He's got a strong fan base and he's opened up the, the door for all of us in a sense. You know, he kind of like, you know, gave us that opportunity. I really hope that at some point people realize that. I hope that like, okay, imagine if, if, if we're, if it's good and bad and we're on the bad side, we're on compound media. And like, yeah, every, what, what everyone, is even is bad it, about it? What the, the fact that we don't follow in the footsteps as mainstream you know we're, we're not saturday night live and fucking bernie sanders we're funnier you know, than saturday night live we're, sorry we're, we're, we say bad words and we're raunchy mm. you know what i'm saying if we start to get a lot of attention i feel like eventually it, like when the norm becomes you can be bad you know what i mean being raunchy be crazy they're getting a lot of clicks they're getting a lot of attention perhaps that's when the whole pc thing It'll will shift. go away yeah, yeah and, and it like will a be tipping like a point shift. i'm hoping that, that that happens at some point people go I don't, this is comedy. They're, they're just talking shit. Like, I, don't I think care. it is because look at gas digital, look at, um, yeah. some shows on Sirius even, but I think mostly, I think compound and gas digital are like brother and sister stations, you know, because sure. a lot of like not giving a fuck, putting comedy first, wacky characters, you know, yeah. a lot of crossover, a lot of fans of a lot of, it's not scripted. To both. It, it's not someone else didn't write it and approve it. Everything else is written and filtered. Oh, you know? so filtered. Yeah. Podcast, podcast, especially like you said, Compound and Gas and Riot and all those guys. There is no filter. You could say anything. Maybe they edit out. Maybe you know, a, a guy, a technician will edit out a bad, a horrible word or, or something that was crazy that was said. You know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. I just start saying everything, everyone's wanna, saying yeah. that it's too fast. You watch Chip Chipperson. You watch like. Bobby Kelly, all of that is going way too fast for anybody to have written any of that. It's like, you're yeah. just watching like an Olympic athlete at that point. Like when, a, yeah. or like when, when we did Kumia's show together and it was like that really great episode, where we were just like, yeah, in a rhythm and everything, we, everything we're saying is hitting. Like there's no better feeling and you can't write that. And you of course, like, I don't know, you can't manufacture that. It just comes out of putting like funny people together. Just conversating, just what humans do, Co communicating. It's a, it goes down to the base, fucking the main thing, you know, the core value. Just be able to talk and feel comfortable and not be nervous. That's like what know? that's what freedom of speech is, and that's where the funniest shit comes out. Yeah. So you know, I hope I hope that that happens, but people seem right now to be so you know blinded by that. Like, oh my god, if he if he said uh, you know Asian people are this, you know, well Shane Gillis kind of went through the whole thing, and he's and he's doing all right. You know, he's doing his thing. Yeah, so. he was kind of like, oh, we made an example of him. But it's like, I think for most, a lot of comics that made them go, ugh, I don't want to yeah. try out for SNL now. They're going to yeah. comb through my whole Twitter. And that it's really tough. sucks. I'm, my future job is being judged by my past. There's no other industry in which that happens. Like, if you apply to be a doctor, they're like, yeah, you'll, if you have a good reference and you're qualified, guess what? You're in. They're not going to be like... Oh, let me see if you uh, there was ever a time you didn't say good night to the to the fucking receptionist. Yeah. I don't know, terrible yeah. example, but other other uh, jobs are not scrutinized the way the comedians are because yeah, everything is so public and out there and recorded forever. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what should we start doing then? Yeah. Only but fans? it's like the more I think about it, the more it's like. I couldn't, I couldn't be another way. I, it, it would be, it would be sad. It would be like, oh, now I'm just working for somebody else at this point. It's one thing if you get a job, you're writing for another comic, you're writing for late night. Okay. That's your job. But if you're going to take your own creative individuality and write it for someone else or to get a certain thing, it's like, I mean, that's okay with projects, but if you're going to shift who you are to make mm -hmm. a certain group of people happy, it's like, oh, then you're not free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think eventually it comes full circle, and that I think that guys like Rich Voss and, and Bobby Kelly and fucking and Jim Norton, I think they were all in our shoes, you know, at some point. And I think that eventually, when you as you get older and you build that clout and you build that rep, 
that even if you've done, because Jim Norton has done some crazy shit, all those guys have done crazy shit, but they had such a strong bond with each other, the same way you, me, Gino, Aaron, Kumi all kind of have that like bond. I think that eventually it will, it will, you know. You bring each other up. It will yeah. bring each other, yeah. Eventually we'll kind of fill in into the seats and everything will be, you know, it will work out. That's what I'm hopeful for. Also, I think I should get jacked because I could get into a Marvel movie. If, I if get you jacked. get jacked, then you can play Aaron in a movie. Yeah, yeah I can play Aaron Berg in a movie. That's, that's the goal, man. You shave my head. I'm trying to get jacked, too. I'm trying to turn my quarantine around. Like, other than eating a donut on camera, like, yeah, I'm running, I'm running every other day now. Yeah. And I have Your like, hair looks great. Your hair is fantastic. I'm hey, sure. this is what happens. I, go, I went to sleep with my hair uh-huh. wet into two braids. And then uh-huh. I wore the two braids for a whole 24 hours and then uh-huh. touched them out and didn't comb through it or anything. And this is what you get. Just like great, super horrific. My girl, my girl takes her hair and she wraps it in this thing and then puts on this baker's cap. What is, what is that? Is that, is what? that for the, Oh, does she braid like it at all? She just like wraps it around her head. She came out the shower yesterday. She has this, this, oh damn, it was in here before. She has this beautiful brush that we bought off Amazon. She literally brushes her hair and it straightens it as she's brushing, right? So it's beautiful, it's straight, it's gorgeous. So she doesn't want to mess it up. So when she goes to sleep, she takes her hair, she flips it all the way forward, and then she wraps it around. Wraps it around her head. That way it doesn't, that's the thing. If you put it up in an elastic, you're going to get that crease. Yeah. Um, I will sometimes put it up with like clips on the top of my yeah. head. I won't wrap it around my head because even when I try to straighten my hair, it just goes yeah. back like pig pen in like a matter of hours. So <laughs> I'll just like let my hair get dirty and like a lot of dry shampoo, sometimes a texturizing spray. But yeah, I've seen people do that wrap around the head move to maintain like a level of straightness. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's like for Dominican chicks and black chicks. Because you always, you know what I mean? I don't know. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like. <laughs> it sounds ethnic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the best though. She plays that hard and she wants to like suck my dick or something. And I'm like. But it is. It's getting, like women have been started. setting their hair in a sense for like decades. You know, when you yeah. were, when it was like back in the day, it would be curlers and pin them. and. Yeah. Definitely not like probably the most fuckable looking thing, but yeah, my my girl blew me yesterday with that thing on that fire. I was she getting blew my big you socks. with her hair oh, wrapped wow. around her head. Yeah, well, well, it's wrapped around, and then there's a, a cap that goes on top of it. It's like so a plastic like, shower cap. She looked like Lucy. You know Lucy, that episode with the chocolate, and she's like, yeah, trying to hide yeah. Me. I felt like I was getting my cock sucked by like a baker or something. Like your cock is on a like a what's it it's called? On a, uh, a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and just, she's just like really busy, like <laughs> yeah, trying to fit all my balls in her mouth. And then it's probably hard because you want to push her head down, but you can't touch her hair because you'll fuck it up. Yeah, literally, gotta grab her by her ears, kind of like yeah, like yeah. Her grab her by her cap. I like, ugh. Yeah. good time. Love, yeah. The things you do for love. But yeah, man, when is it? When when are we gonna get back to the studio? When's that gonna happen? Um, it depends how. Have you been there? You've been there. You've what? been. Did, were you there recently? I did. I did. Um, I went to go pick up a box, and then I jumped on in hot water, and it was good because I because Kayla sent me a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's nice. That was was that last week or two weeks ago? I, I just saw it on Twitter. I just saw a, a picture yeah. of you I'm, uh, hugging the desk. I'm not. I'm definitely not opposed to going back to the studio. It's just like oh. You know, if the average guest is not willing to come in, then it maybe it does make more sense to keep zooming. Yeah, yeah. Um, How was the Metro North? Was it? Did you? Oh, uh, Frank actually drove me in. Oh, okay, nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared of public transportation. I <laughs> wouldn't be. They've wiped it down, and like viruses can't live on train surfaces just indefinitely. There's so much misinformation out there about the virus. It's like. It's like, you're really fine. There's such an incredibly low risk. If you're like, decrepit and you have a shitty immune system, that's one thing. But the average healthy person like you and me, it's like, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, I don't have it. I got tested uh, last week. I don't have it, but I don't have it. You got tested spot. for it? I got tested for it. They put the swab all up in my nose. I hate that more. I would rather have the doctor put his dick in my asshole <laughs> than get a nose swab. I would literally uh, rather have anal as hard as they want to do it than have that. <laughs> That's hilarious. You have the antibodies. I'd rather have the uh, nurse peg me with a gigantic dildo. I, they did it. You want to sneeze right away. And uh, and I got to, and I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have the antibodies either, which means I got an yeah. antibody test. I'm waiting for the results. 
Okay, good. So that's blood. That was just from the blood. They just did a blood test. Yeah. So, yeah. They took my blood. So, yeah. They did a bunch of shit on me, but, you know, what are you going to do? I, I developed asthma somehow. I don't know how the fuck that happened. Really? But I just think it's because I'm so fat and it's blocking my airways. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you just need more yeah. cardio. You're probably fine. I need a lot more. And maybe well, you that, have yeah. um, allergies, too. Well, I'm hiking today, and I bought a jump rope, and I started jump roping. So there you go. You're you're I there. Got drag. It Let's really listen. takes like a couple of workouts in a row for you to be like, oh yeah, I am gonna get back. It's it, there's it's gonna happen. You know. You realize everyone at Compound is gonna die, and it's gonna just be you and me at some point. <laughs> at some oh, point, everyone's gonna be dead, and it's gonna be me and you. So we have to get jacked. Because well, we yeah, get Karen Fian's been working out every day. Like, she's been not wasting any time this quarantine. She's going to have a sick quarantine body, and I want to at least emerge not worse looking. Yeah, but you look like you smell good. When I look at Karen's, I'm like, ugh, I feel like there's a <laughs> smell going on. She's always feeding the dog and making omelets, and she's not washing her hands. She puts the butter on the pan with her <laughs> fucking dirty hands. Oh, yeah, her cooking and, show. It's cute. Yeah, no, she's, she's, you know, she's, a, she's a slob. <laughs> She knows people I like love her. her. People like her. I love her. Yeah. I love. I, she's my. She's my one of my best friends. Not yeah. really, but I love her. She's but uh, but yeah, fuck her. <laughs> I know. I gotta try to get like. I don't know. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of. Uh, I don't want to let it go. What do you mean? Like no, let myself good. go. I don't know. Maybe it's like a. I don't <sighs> want to be somebody who like looks old. You know. You know what? I, I don't. I, that's bullshit. I think that you're on the right page, and I think you just gotta every day move somehow move something walk, sweat in okay. some way because the mistake that i made was i was doing the same shit you were doing i was getting the 12 donuts i was doing the uber eats and all that stuff but i wasn't moving and the 20 pounds came like that I, for a month i was good because i was moving every day i did fucking youtube workouts i did something every day and i got lazy i stopped and all the alcohol and sugar piled on me and literally oh, I yeah and i've been drinking out. something every day yeah that's fine as long as you move as long as you go outside i think you know, and outside, you know, you move your body for a half hour, an hour. I think you'll be fine. Yeah, just start moving. Just move, move, girl. Move that body. Yeah, this was a good little podcast, figs. It was, it was fun. Not a lot of Zoom lag. It's it was a good quality. What? The, the connection was strong. There's not a lot of Zoom lag. No, yeah. <laughs> Zoom lag is Zoom. Yo, Zoom That's lag. That's true. <laughs> we got to do tonight, something with that. What? We have to somehow capitalize on Zoom lag because that's a funny shit. Great. Like if he could, like if Frank could clip, like get all the clips where you were like, yeah, my, so my fucking cat died. And then I'm just like. <laughs> what? Cat, what? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, but uh, so my computer, I got a new computer. <laughs> just so all right. Bad. So we'll have to do like a super cut of, of Zoom lags. Zoom lag awkwardness. I don't know. I just think it's fucking hilarious. But. It is funny. It's funny to watch people struggle on Zoom. Yeah. What are you going to do? It'll be over soon, hopefully. Be back to normal. Uh, all right. Well, I'll see you tonight for wet spot. <laughs> I'll see you tonight for the wet spot. Uh, what do I bring on this hike? A snack? What? what do I bring on this hike? Where do you Where what? Is, when I, I'm going on a hike. What, what's two things I got to bring? Oh, on a hike? Yeah. So, put some block on your face. And uh -huh. I would say, like... If you can do a little backpack with water, other, otherwise, like, you don't really need to bring anything with you for, unless you're going to go for more than two hours. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hat, hit you up. Sunglasses. Cool. All right, I'll send you pictures. All right. Bye, Figs. Where can we find you? <laughs> uh, in my house, doing nothing. Bye. Bye. <laughs>